Family Theater presents Barbara Britton, Barry Fitzgerald, and Dan O'Herlihy. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, brings you Barry Fitzgerald and Dan O'Herlihy in the old Irish legend, King O'Toole and St. Kevin. To introduce the story, your hostess, Miss Barbara Britton. Thank you, Jean Baker. It is often true that artists who reach the heights in one field find their talents adaptable to nearly equal success in others. Such a man was the Dublin Irishman Samuel Lover. With little actual schooling in painting, Samuel Lover possessed the native talent that enabled him to support himself in relative comfort until 1833, when he celebrated his 36th birthday. Then, he turned his painting, his pictures, on paper, rather than canvas. He used words rather than oils. Shortly thereafter, he became one of the founders of the world-famous Dublin University magazine, to which he contributed tales of Irish folklore. From these short tales, he branched out into longer pieces until his works included four novels and many plays. Our tale tonight is taken from his earlier writings and first appeared in a collection of legend and stories of early Erin. Now it is my pleasure to present Barry Fitzgerald as King O'Toole and Dan O'Herlihy as Joe Irwin in a radio adaptation of Samuel Lover's King O'Toole and St. Kevin, a legend of Glendalough. of the Valley of Glendalough has made it for centuries a haven to which people of the British Isles have come to repair their flagging spirits that they may return to winning a living in less pleasant climates. Its beauty is perhaps enhanced by the mystical tales that concern its every book and tree. At any rate, it lives in yet a new dimension when one sees it with the aid of the guides who make their living recalling the glories of its past. Such a man was Joe Irwin. Irwin's respect for the spirits of the valley inspired the flow of words that could sweep up the listener in dreams of the past until, benumbed, even the skeptical found reality in the pictures Joe framed with evening shadows. Wish, no, wish. We'll stop here for a bit. No, no, we won't be rushing around the valley. Not when in every corner of it there's tales to make your eyes light up. Now, uh, take this pile of stones. Here, here, sit you down, sir, and I'll tell you about them. This, sir, is a very holy place. It's the chapel of the King of the O'Toole's. Of course, you've often heard of the King of the O'Toole's. Oh, when do you tell me so? I, I thought all the world far and near heard of the King of the O'Toole's. Well, well, the darkness of mankind is unbelievable. Well, the O'Toole was a king of the great old days of long, long ago. And he loved his sport as he loved his life, and hunting in particular. Why, from dawn to dusk, he'd be tramping over the mountains beyond after the deer. Ah, well, tell him, me lad, we'll, we'll wait here for a time. But, sir, young deer will be after escaping us. Ah, yes, Chins, but these old legs will go no further. Oh, and as for that deer, well, there'll be... Be many another as good in these hills. Yet it was yon stag we were hunting for, me lord. And what hunter will forsake one stag for another? An old one, me lad. Ah, to be young again like you, turns to walk these hills again with springy foot until I've caught me stag. Then rest but a bit, sir, and we'll catch this one yet today. No, no, lad, it's back we'll be going. Me heart's no longer in the hunt when I know me body not take me to it. Come on, lad, let's be on our way. And 
so it was, for the king grew old in the course of time, and by that reason he was stiff in the limbs. And when he was stricken with years, his heart failed him, for he was lost completely for want of a bit of diversion. He could go hunting no longer, and without the hunt, there was no more fun left in life for his majesty. And twas with these thoughts in his mind that the young page lad Terence went out to search the countryside for a present for his king. Your Majesty, sir, I, I, I have... What on earth is that you've got bailing out of your blows, lad? Twas as I was about to say, sir, tis a goose I brought you. Well, the devil take you. You know I've no liking for the taste of goose. Well, tis not for eating, sir. Tis for diverting the king of the O'Toole. Well, indeed, it'll take more than a goose to cheer him up. Uh, perhaps, sir. Yet I notice already a smile on your face. And tis many a day since that was seen. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> well, now that's a great, great, grave goose, me boy. You'd laugh yourself to see her peck at you. Terence, it's a good service you've done, your king. And so it was. For the goose used to swim across the lake and go down diving for trout. Oh, and there are no finer trout in all Ireland than them trout in the lake there. Why, I remember four years ago when the English lord was hereabouts with all his friends. Right to this very spot they came. And, huh? Oh, 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 the goose, you say? Oh, yes, yes. Well, sir, she'd catch fish on a Friday for the king, to say nothing of ember days. And the frolicsome tricks of the goose there made the king break his sides with that. There he is, turns me lad. Here, take the goose while I loose an arrow at that snag. Yes, sir. Here now, be quiet. Be quiet. It'll be a good shot from here. Unless the rascal hears us and moves. Oh, that blasted bird, sir. She won't even ever keep quiet. Now we've lost another deer. <laughs> ah, well, no matter, no matter. It's the hunt that matters, not the kill. That's a clever bird you gave me, Terence. <laughs> I'll wager she's in league with the beasts of the forest, sir. It's been months since we've had a trophy for our efforts. Yes, lad, but think of the months before then when there was no hunting. Come on, cheer up. Tomorrow we'll find our game again. And so it was. Diverted by the goose, the king soon forgot his own ills, and day after day he roamed the forests. Yeah, all went mighty well, until the time when the goose herself became stricken with the years and grew stiff in her limbs, like her master before her. Then it was that the poor king was lost completely. He was nearly heartbroken, and each day found him paler, and the unhappy Terence often heard his master wish for death. Aye, the king of the O'Toole's was melancholy indeed. We reasoned that the goose was no more in the flower of her bloom. Ah, uh, this life grows heavy on me. The days are dark and the sun gives warmth no more. It is the winter of age that beats me again. Ah, no, even me poor goose has the frost of age on her limbs. It's a sad thing to be a king without a diversion. Yeah, perhaps it would be better if I walked out into that lake and let the waters take me if they would. Good health to you, man. I didn't see you as I turned the corner. Good health to you. Good health to you, king of the O'Toole's. True for you. I am the king of the O'Toole's, the prince and plenipotentiary of these parts. But how did you come to know that? Ah, it's of no matter, and I know more than that, nor twice that. And who are you that makes so bold? Oh, you never mind who I am. You'll know more of me before we part, your majesty. Well, I'd be proud of the knowledge of your acquaintance. Ah, well, you may say that. And now if I may make so bold to ask, how was your goose, your majesty... Well, the saints preserve us. Hey, how came you to know about me, Goose? Oh, it's of no matter. I was 
I was given to understand it. Now, that's folly talk, because the goose and myself are private friends. And not one could tell you, barring the fairies. Ah, uh, then it wasn't the fairies, for I don't keep the like of such company. Oh, well, now, you might do worse, me gay fella. For it's they could show you a crock of money as easy as kiss hands. And money is not to be sneezed at by a poor man dressed such as you are. Maybe I've a better way of making money myself. Oh, be the holy, barring you're a counterfeiter. That's impossible. I'd just scorn to be the like of a counterfeiter. I'd scorn to be the like. Huh. And then what are you that makes money so easy by your own account? I am an honest man. Oh, then you'll not be making money. I am an honest man, I repeat, O tool of the O'Tools. Well, and then how is it that you make your money so easy? Supposing I told you that I make old things as good as new? Oh, then it's a tinker you are. I'm no tinker, sir. I've a better trade than a tinker. What would I, would you say if I made your old goose as good as new? Huh, as good as new? That's my offer, O'Toole. What would you offer? Well, in truth, then I'd give you more money, more money than you could count if you did the like. And I'd be beholden to you into the bargain. I scorn your dreary money. Well, faith, then I'm thinking a trifle of change would do your eggs no harm. I have a vow against money. And I'm big sworn never to have gold, silver, nor brass in my possession. Except, I suppose, the trifle you can't help. You huh? just hit it, O'Toole. But though I can take no money, you could take a few acres of land if you'd give them to me. With all the fullness of me heart, if you can do as much as you say. Try me. Call down your goose, and I can see what I'll do for him. <laughs> well, she, she could use me service, O'Toole of the O'Tools. I'll warrant she's too old to hear you. No, 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 no. Her ear is sharp, but her legs are slow. She'll come along now. <laughs> Isn't it enough to make your eyes fill with tears, lad? See how painful it is for the old girl to walk. Oh, yes, yes, now there, girl. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Yes, yes. We're both old alike as two peas, both well, old. I'll do the job for you, King O'Toole. Tis a pitiful sight, I see. Be the holy if you do, I'll say you're the smartest fellow in the seven parishes. You must say more than that, King O'Toole. <laughs> Not so feeble in my mind as to repair the old goose for nothing. Name it, man. Name it. Well, what'll you give me if I do the job for you? What'll you give me? I'll give you whatever you ask. Fair enough? Divil a fair. That's the way to do business. Well, this is the bargain I'll make with you, too. Will you give me all the gro ground the goose flies over the first time, after I make her as good as new? I will. You won't go back on your word? Honor bright. Honor bright. It's a bargain. No. Come here, you poor old cripple. It is myself that'll make you a sporting bird. And then the stranger took up the goose by the two wings, and he held her a moment. Then he tossed her up in the air, and whoosh, he blew at her, just giving her a blast to help her. And that bird just took to her wings, flying like one of the eagles themselves, and cutting as many capers as a swallow before a shower of rain. And away she went, around the end of the lake there, far beyond where you can see the waterfall, and on with her then, right over the hills of Loch Anur. Stout and steady she flew over the mountain over there, and over the woods of Powell and Ass. Uh, that's where I showed you the gorgeous waterfall on the way up, where the poor young lady drowned herself. Her seat was uh, last Thursday. It was a 12 months since. And there she comes, O'Toole, fresh as a daisy she is, too. <laughs> ah, them of one in light as a lark you were flying. Better than ever you look. Ah, but you're the darling of the world. Uh, what do you say to me, O'Toole of the O'Tools, that made the likes of that? Be the holy, I'll say nothing beats the art of men except maybe the bees. And do you say no more than that? And that I'm beholden to you as to no other man. But will you give me all the ground the goose flew over? I will, sir, 
And you're welcome to it, though it's the last acre I have to give. Indeed it is, for she flew the boundaries of your kingdom. Well, then take it, man, for to see me sweet my boning is so hearty, so hearty again it makes it worth the price. Then you'll keep your word through? As true as the day is long. Tis well for you, too, that you've said the word. For if you didn't say it, the sun would shine at midnight before that goose would fly again. Oh, well, when you came, you said you knew many things. But you must be black ignorant if you don't know that my word is always me bond. Take the land. It's yours. King of the O'Toole's. I've always heard that you were a rare spot, but you're a decent man as well. I only came here to try you. And what is that to try me about, man? You don't know me because I'm disguised. Well, truth then, you, you are right enough. I didn't perceive it. Ah, for there's no sign of the clover and hoof on you. Oh, that's not what I mean. I mean, I've been cutting you up to your eyebrows. I've been fooling you, and I'm not myself at all. Well, then, in heaven's name, man, if you're not yourself, who are you? Why, lad, I'm St. Kevin. You're St. Kevin? You'll not need to kneel, man. Is it that the great St. Kevin that I've been discoursing all the time to without knowing it? All this time, just as if he was a lump of a gassoon. Oh, and so you are the saint. I am that. Oh. King of the O'Toole's. And I thought I, I, I thought I was only talking to a young lad. Well, you know the difference now. Rhymes and Kevin. Well, heaven preserve me. The same that went to school with the prophet Jeremiah. Hmm. Come on, King O'Toole. We must go to the castle. There's matters to be discussed. Well, sir, that's the way the place came, all at once, into the hands of St. Kevin, for the goose flew around every individual acre of the king's property. You see, the goose was let into the secret by St. Kevin, who was pretty cute, and a holy man besides, him that is counted the greatest of saints because he went to school with the prophet Jeremiah. Aye, St. Kevin's hands were gentle ones, though, for he'd no use for the land of the king of the O'Toole's other than a plot or two of ground to build a chapel for the glory of God. And when the king found out he was still to reign over the land about him, why, then his gratitude was greater than ever. And so, in his gratitude, he and the page boy Terence spread the tidings about, about the fine man that St. Kevin was. And soon all of the people profited by the good works of the blessed saint and the fine old king. And so, they passed their days the best of friends from that day on. And the king was happy as a child with his diversion. Turns, 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 me lad. Now, where is the blessed boy? He, here I am, sir, and, and with your darling goose too. Ah, <laughs> me jewel. And is it trout you're after catching today? Or have you a new diversion for your old master? She is flying like the wind today, sir. And circling back and forth and round about from the crow of the crock to the song of the redbreast. Ah, she's a rare one indeed. Ah, oh, truth indeed, turns me lad. And the light of me decline in years, thanks to the good St. Kevin. It's like the book says, sir. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And you'll be twice blessed. What with giving your property to the good saint? And there's the chapel we'll be building in the land over there. And uh, you, turns me go soon. Is it true that you'll be books worn to aid the good saint in this work? Aye, that is my wishing, sir. For there are many people in dark, darkest ignorance in this land. Ah, uh -huh. and it's you that'll be bringing them a piece of the true salvation, I suppose. <laughs> but it's a real boy, Terence, that you are. But as for me, monsieur, I suppose I must be waiting out my days with the good saint to provide me meat and drink. <laughs> And this darling here to bring joy to me own heart with a frolicsome tricks. But it was soon after that a terrible thing happened. And you'll shed a tear or two yourself when you hear it. You remember how that wonderful goose was all for catching a fine trout on Fridays and Ember Days for the king's supper table. 
Well, the king and Terence, and sometimes the good saint, if his Christian duties didn't forbid it, would go down to the far end of the lake, there to gladden their hearts with the shenanigans of the goose. And of course, to wait for the tasty trout that that excellent bird would be sure to catch. Now, Mushy Terence, uh, let me darling down into the water now. Well, she's after catching us all the fine supper. Oh, she is full of light, sir. There, off you go now, Krishna. It's a talented goose you have, O'Toole, and it's a rare treat to watch her perform for your delight. Ah, mushers myself that should be ever grateful to you, St. Kevin, for giving the breath of life to the old girl. Saints preserve us. What's wrong with the goose? Sir, sir, it's a big heart for you. He's got a goose by the neck. Take ten cents, me lad, quick. Run to the forge, you will run. Oh, my morning, my morning. Can you not hear me call to you? St. Kevin, sir, St. Kevin, can you give me a hand? Hold steady, me lad, I'm coming. Terence, my lad. Tell me, is he? Is he? Oh. Oh, me poor darling, my cushion, my see, sir, it was a mistake that the poor goose made, for instead of the creature killing a trout for the king's supper, the eel killed the king's goose. <laughs> and it's a sad tale to be telling for sure. But the wicked eel didn't eat the king's goose, because he daren't eat what the same Kevin had laid his holy hands on. However, the king never recovered from the loss of his goose. He, been feeble in years and doting, as I'm telling you, had the goose stuffed. Oh, not with potatoes and onions, but as a real curiosity, and preserved in a glass case. And every day after that, the old king would gaze upon the poor thing fondly, until it'd nearly make your heart bleed with the pity of it. And then the poor king had the case moved into his bedchamber, when his old limbs would no longer carry him through the corridors. But came a day in King O'Toole's bedroom. It is well that you have seen him, St. Kevin, for the poor man's life is near spent. Aye, and a good one it's been, I know. Shh. He'd say a word to us. Terence. Terence. Is, is, is it you, me boy? Uh, aye, sir. Tis Terence. Tell me, Terence. Is the goods a saint hereabouts? At your side, King of the O'Toole's. Now let you rest easy and stop fretting the minutes away. There's nothing to fear. Oh, it's not, not, it's not that I fear, blessed boy. It's only that I wish to make it clear about the uh, goose. Uh, oh, that was the joy of me declining years. But uh, I, I'd not like it taking a miss about me feeling for. But uh, being an old and, and a... A uh, lonely man. Now, shush, no, don't be saying such things. No man is lonely who's ruled as you have. For each man about the countryside is the friend of O'Toole of the O'Tools. And you have not but good works to recommend you, sir. For you've turned over the kingdom to the good saint. And your name is spoken with reverence by every tongue. Ah, then it's the real lad you are. And I'll rest easy now. But I'm, I, I'm worn out and tired, and, and I think it's time for me to go to sleep. To sleep. St. Kevin, sir. Yes, Terence. To us a fitting farewell for the king of the O'Toole's now sleeps eternal. So, 
That's the way of it. And the poor king died, and on Michaelmas too. Aye. And indeed, it's the truth I'm telling you, sir. It's been said he was after grieving himself to death over the loss of his poor old goose. But those who know say he was an old, old man, and his time had come. Now, what do you think? <laughs> This is Barbara Britton again. You know, we're all affected by the things around us, by what we see and hear, by the example of others. And that's so very true in a home. If there's always a kind and encouraging word, we can't help but think bright and cheerful thoughts. And you know something? Those who are close to God are best able to be happy and cheerful. Why? Well, when you know that God is ready and able to help you, you can be confident about the future because you know your faith and trust in him will always bring his help. That's why when a family joins together in daily family prayer, they can be sure of happiness in their home. Yes, pray together as a family every day, for prayer brings peace. A prayerful home is a peaceful home. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater has brought you Barry Fitzgerald and Dan O'Herlihy in King O'Toole and St. Kevin, with Barbara Britton as your hostess. Colm O'Hanrahan was heard as Terence and Pat White as St. Kevin. Our adaptation of this old Irish legend was written by Arthur Sawyer, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Del Valle. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. This is Gene Baker inviting you to join us next week at this time when your family theater will present Dinah Shore and Gigi Perot in The Window in the Sky. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and is broadcast to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>